Hi everyone, it's Shari here today and I'm going to be making this fun rainbow spinner card with this cute little chameleon. So this is the little Black Friday set that is coming out for Black Friday called Once in a Chameleon and I thought it would be really cool to make him change colors. So I'm going to be doing some watercoloring with some distress inks. I'm using Warm Lipstick, Spice Marmalade, uh, mustard seed, twisted citron, salty ocean, and wilted violet. And I'm going to do some watercoloring in rainbow to make the disc that's going to go behind my image and be the spinner and the part that changes color. So I've just got a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock here, and I'm just putting down a layer of clean water with a very large brush. And then I'm going to go in and Add some water to my little distress inks that I smushed on my craft mat and I'm just gonna pick up the color and start dabbing it around so I started with the yellow because I thought it might be good to start with my lightest color in case my water got too muddy um, and then I'm working my way around and basically just six equal parts of color this doesn't have to be perfect and they're gonna kind of blend together with each other but I just want to make a circle that extends from one side to the other across the short way across this card so I'm just adding the color in the rainbow order and that's why I kind of smushed them in the order that I wanted them. And I'm letting them blend together where they touch. That's why I put water on the whole thing to begin with. And then I'm going to hit it with my heat tool and dry all that. I felt like after it was dry, I still needed a little more intensity, especially with the yellow and the green because they're very light. So I'm going back in and picking up that mustard seed and that twisted citron and just adding a little bit more. I actually added a little bit more of the other colors as well. I'm not doing the whole sheet because I'm going to be using a scallop circle die to cut this out to create the spinning mechanism. But I just wanted to get a good saturation of color so this is bright and colorful. So now that it's dry, I'm going to use the largest scallop circle die to cut it out and I'm just going to center that up to where sort of where all of the colors meet is pretty close to the center of the circle. This doesn't have to be perfect just so there's no white left over on the outside when you cut it. Now I'm going to find the center of my circle and I'm just using my ruler to connect two of the scallops like the part that goes in and makes a point. That's the easiest way I feel it is to draw a straight line across one of these and I just went both ways so that I have a little pencil X in the middle and that marks the spot where I'm going to punch a hole. So I've got a small hole punch here. You could use a regular size. This is just the one that I have um, and it will fit well and you won't see the circle behind the brad that I'm going to put in there. So it's going to spin around just like that. Now I've got a piece of acetate here and I've mounted my little chameleon stamp to my mini misty and I'm going to be using some black stays on ink to stamp him onto the acetate. So this is going to create my little window that we're going to see the colors through. And this acetate is bigger than I need but I'm going to be cutting it down and you'll see that here in a little bit. And I'm just making sure I have a good impression I got a pretty good impression the first time, but I'm just making sure that all that ink has transferred over to my acetate. And I'll just put him aside for a little while until we're ready to trim him down. But you can see how he's a cute little window that that color will show through. So now I've got a piece of storm cloud cardstock cut into a card base, and then I have another piece that's just the size of the front of the card base. So if you noticed in the beginning of this video, I ended up with a square card because I changed my mind. I actually kind of wish I left it this tall card, but anyway, we'll, I'll tell you why here in a little bit. But I want to find the center of this panel that's going to go on the front. So this is going to go on top of the circle and then the card base, of course, will adhere all this to the card base. So I'm using my T-square again to just draw a pencil line down the center. 
And then I was trying to decide if I wanted it a little higher or a little lower, but I actually ended up putting it right smack in the center. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the very edge, the right edge of this panel. So I drew the line down the center first so that that is the center of the card. And this panel is just going to have the right side trimmed off so that that wheel peeks out from behind it like that. You could draw the line after the fact, but you just have to do some math to figure out exactly where it should be. So I ended up just putting the circle right smack in the center. And I marked the center of that and I'm going to use that same hole punch and punch a hole in that front panel. And then once that's on there, you can erase those pencil lines because you're not going to need them anymore. But you can see how it lines up and that wheel is going to just peek out the right side there so that you are able to spin it. So the other thing I wanted to do is cut the window on the front, or the other thing I need to do is cut the window on the front. So I lined up my circle with the hole, I traced around it with a pencil so I could see exactly where my color is going to be and I make sure that I put my little chameleon where he's going to be colored all the time and it's not going to miss and catch the edge of that circle. So I'm just stamping it on that front panel and I'm going to use that as my guide to cut it out with the die. So you can see I've used the die, I've cut out a little window. And that is where I'm going to put the acetate behind it. So I'm just going to trim my acetate down so that it doesn't stick out the sides. And then I'm going to use some Tombow Extreme Adhesive right around the edges of this window that I've cut out with dye. And I'm going in with my adhesive eraser and just removing the adhesive right where the hole is just so that there's no chance of it kind of hanging up the wheel as it spins. So my acetate went over my hole so I need to punch that acetate with the same hole punch. You can see there how you see the color through the window. So I can just put a brad through there and hold it in place. And now I can erase my circle, my scallop circle that I traced with the pencil. How cute is that? So this is where I decided that it was going to look like way too much gray and I wasn't going to be able to fill it with just the sentiment so I decided I wanted to make it a square card. Hindsight, I wish I'd left it as an A2 size card because the spinner mechanism is really close to the edges in my adhesive and it doesn't spin very freely and I think it would have done better if I'd left it as an A2 size card but I'll just have to make another one later and, and try it that way. Because I think after I was done that I really could have filled up the space with the elements that I added on the front. So I've cut the card base down to be a square. I cut the front panel and since I put that in the center I just had to cut the same amount off of each end to where it was four and a quarter. And I'm taking it apart because I decided I wanted to add a little stitching detail to the front. So this is the stitch border and I'm just going to tape that right to the edge and run that through my die cut machine so that I get that little stitching detail along that right side. And then I also took a piece of black glitter paper and used one of the scallop borders and added a piece and that's going to go on the left side because I thought that kind of framed up that a little more and dressed it up and made it not look quite so plain. This is what happens when you don't really have a plan before you start. I usually have a plan. This time I was kind of just making it up as I go, other than making a spinner card, which I knew I wanted to do. So now for the sentiment, I just have the little 
branch that comes in the set. It's stamped on a piece of brown cardstock and die cut, but it's not glued down yet. It's just kind of a placeholder so I can line up my sentiment. And I'm going to white heat emboss this sentiment, so I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. And I'm going to be stamping with Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink that's good for embossing. And then I'm going to use the white embossing powder from Wampon. I, this is a great white embossing powder, by the way. It really fills in. Sometimes I have problems with white powder not filling in, but this, this stuff seems to work really great. So now that it's embossed, I heated up with my heat tool and melted that. I can just kind of wipe the dust off. And then at the top, I'm going to do the same thing with the little heart that's in this set. I'm going to white emboss three little hearts. Using the same white embossing powder. And I'll just hit that with my heat tool and melt it. So now to assemble some of the rest of the card here, I'm going to finally put that little branch in there. I'm just tucking it underneath the scallops because I didn't put the adhesive all the way up on the scallops. I just ran a strip down the right side or left side, excuse me. And then I can put in the brad and I made it to where the brad was right at the end of the branch kind of looks like a berry there. And since I have this square card and my circle is so close to the edges, I'm having to use this really thin um, double-sided tape as my adhesive to put this panel on the front. This is where I think that if I had left it an A2 size card that was taller, I could have put a nice thin foam on the top and the bottom and my wheel would have been able to spin a lot more freely. So. This was an experiment, and I'll just try a different method next time, but it works okay. The other thing I did decide to do was I took some of those really thin foam adhesive squares. These are the ones that are half the thickness, and I put some in the corners. I thought that might hold it up slightly and maybe not get so much um, resistance when the wheel spins from the paper rubbing against each other. I don't know if it helped, but... I gave it a try because this is really thin so it's not very obvious that it's a foam adhesive. So now I pulled off all the backers from those strips and those little foam squares and I'm just going to line it up to the left side of my card. Make sure those thin pieces on the top and bottom and the side are tacked down. And it spins, it's just not like you can, you can't just spin it like the wheel on a, the price is right or anything. It takes a little more work. And then I stamped out the little leaves that come in the set with um, freshly cut grass ink onto some cilantro cardstock. I die cut those out with a little die that comes with the set and just adding those to the branch. And then to embellish, I thought that it was a little strange that his eye changes colors. So I'm going to add a little googly eye using some glossy accents and I'm just using my jewel picker to pick it up. Then I added some stickles to the hearts and then I'm just going to add a few white um, Nouveau crystal drops around just to kind of fill in a little more. So once I had all this on I really feel like I could have left it a tall card and it would have been fine. But like I said. It was experimental. And then to finish it off, I'm using the push here set because there's a little arrow kind of telling you to spin the circle. And I'm just stamping that with the storm cloud ink on the storm cloud cardstock for a little more tone on tone and not as dark as black would be. So isn't that cute how he changes colors? So here's a closer look at that finished card. And then here's another look with some different colors. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.